applause to the organizers because they are organizing a great Django moment this year. So, what is DevOps? 
Is it singular? Is, is that hope singular for DevOps? Is it a function title? No. It is not a person juggling two jobs, being a dev and an op at the same time. This is not DevOps. This is a function title that recruiters use and think they know DevOps. This is not DevOps. DevOps is a movement. And it's just that. It's a movement about a growing concern about working together and to obtain company goals. There are no strict rules, there are no guidelines, there are no real tools that DevOps say you have to use this. this that doesn't exist. DevOps is just the movement and the philosophy of let us work together and improve our technology and our product. It's people coming together and discussing this. So, no. So, where did DevOps really start? So, in 2009, there was a DevOps Days conference. And it all started right before that, or years before that even. There were people just sitting together and thinking about, gee, how can we, how can we get our application source code into production? In the best and easy way, with more reliable code, with less bugs, with less uh, deployment errors, with uh, more happy customers, more happy managers, and just less work to do to get it to get it working. And in 2009, Double Play started, and we uh, they had 60 people or so coming. And the first part of the, of the sessions were presentations like these. And the afternoon was just filled with open spaces, people sitting together in a circle of chairs and discussing a topic and seeing and sharing uh, their experiences at their company. Saying, oh, we, we do this, we do that. Oh, yeah, it's a good idea. Okay. And people were thrilled with the concept. And DevOps Days grew and grew and grew. And now you can have a DevOps Days in any continent where you want to go, except for Antarctica. Uh, but it would be fun. Uh, so people have been doing this forever. There's just now a new name and a hype around it. So but there is no real definition, but people can summary what is DevOps. So just to explain it to your manager or for to your HR recruiter for the 10 billionth time. So it's about culture, it's about lean, it's about automation, it's about measurement, and it's about sharing. So let's start about discussing the culture part. The culture part is about how does our company function? How do we people work in our company? How do we get new people involved into new projects? How do we get uh, good recruitment? What questions do we ask? How do we cope with failure? And how do we handle failure? How do we learn from failure? And it's about teaching stuff to other, uh, to other employees, to your co-workers. And that was like a really nice uh, quote from uh, Lloyd Taylor, I believe. And it's, you can't directly change culture, but you can change behavior, and behavior becomes culture. So, you can't come in as a new guy, you, can't, you, you see things that are wrong, and you can't say, I want this better, we should do this. You can't do that. You have to change tiny behaviors. And if you change small behaviors in a company, like, how do we cope with a failure? How do we handle failure? How do we handle deploys? This starts to become a culture, because if you do it right, other teams and other people will notice you are doing it right. And they will start getting motivated to do it right themselves, because it is really difficult to take that first step to get things done right. Like the measurement part, that's awesome. People should do this. And I think a lot of people here that watched the presentation from uh, Bruno, I think it was Bruno, he, they, they, he inspired, tr truly, he inspired people to take on the measurement job of measuring their application. That is teaching. So, let's get back to the battling between the devs and the ops guys. This has been going around for ages, right? How many people have been in this kind of situation where they have to disagree with their ops guys? For the video, I see a lot of hands rising. So, but wait, can you blame them? Blame them? This is the shit that they're reading, right? This is, this is, okay, I admit this is 
really funny reading material. But this is why a culture grew that being an op means you have to hate developers. Being a dev means you have to hate users. Well, being an op means you have to hate everyone but ops. Okay, but being a security, there are things like for security as well. Like security, oh, let's just remove the user accounts and everything is fixed. So, there is, a, there is a culture behind it, and we have to know that there is a culture behind it, and we have to think, we have to uh, put the empathy back in our job. We have to work with people, so we have to understand these people. And why they think differently than us, so communication is very important there. So this is part of a bigger cycle structure, problem. For, in my opinion, it's the archaic divide and conquer mechanism used by managers who don't know shit. So, they have a, a really large company and they organize their people into their silos. And their silos, they are based around competences. They put the developers in one silo, they put the operations guys in one silo, they take the uh, user acceptance testers in one silo, and everything's fine and dandy. No, it isn't. Uh, <clears throat> the problem here is that making a project means making a package, throwing it up in the air, landing in another silo, doing something with the package, throwing it up again, and then you have like it has to pass all the silos to get it working. So instead of making a silo for each competence, why not make a silo around a product, have a product team? with a developer, with an operator who can maybe switch between different projects here and there, but you have one team, so you have shared responsibility inside that team. So, I like to refer about with this uh, to Brandon Rose from last year's Kangaroo. He talked about a Copernican refactor, which means less that Copernicus refactored the belief system of people that the, earth, that the sun revolved around the earth, and the Copernican refactor for him was that he put the sun in the center instead of the earth. So let's do that the same thing. Let's put competence, take it out of the center of the silo, and put the product inside the silo. So everything revolves around the product instead of the competence. So this is basically a communication problem. Uh, what are you going to do about this? If you're in such a silo structure, which probably most people are, except for the tiny tiny startups and the, 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 the small to medium sized companies, you have, you have a silo structure. <coughs> Especially when I was back in the government part, you had the devs and the ops separately together, and the only way to communicate was via a spreadsheet. So, what do you do when you start a new project? Always have all your stakeholders for the project together when you start it. If you have a project development starting, always take ops people back because they have a different point of perspective than you on the product. If you think about functional requirements, they think about non-functional requirements. They think about how to do security, how to do backups, how to do it reliably, how to do high availability, uh, how to do the monitoring part about it. So you have to take that into account and always have them along with you when you start on a new project. And in most applications, these non-functional requirements are, are just an afterthought. And that is wrong. That is just plain wrong. You should need to do that from the beginning. So it's basically about collaborating between different groups in your company. So this was culture. Now, one slide for me, because there is not much to say about it. It's uh, being efficient now with no waste, which is the definition from the vocabulary from the dictionary. So basically what it means is that if you have uh, if you have some procedures, how you function, how you do your job, you see ways how you can improve that, how you can be more efficient. You suggest, you adapt the procedures, you try them out, and if it works, those are your new procedures. This is being lean. This means changing and adapting for increased efficiency. What this means in the DevOps world is uh, improving the processes you are trying to uh, introduce into your company. Don't be wrong, uh, don't be a fool and uh, stick with your first idea. You have the right to be wrong. So, the A part in class is the automation. And I'm not going to say terribly much about it, 
basically for a dev it means developing with a vagrant box, for example. It's uh, having a vagrant box, just doing vagrant up, and it would load up, have your Apache or your Nginx or your Postgres already installed and pre-configured. This is part of the continuous uh, conf uh, the configuration management part of, of, of the DevOps idea. So, make a lot of things go automatically. So the configuration part is, how do you uh, handle when you have multiple nodes? You see what the problem is here? There's one pointing upwards. So, somewhere something went wrong, probably, well, I hope something went wrong, because else it would my explanation, but uh, imagine a guy doing this manually, having to configure each server or each uh, disk and point it to that coordinate. If you have a, a really big infrastructure and you have one uh, server between, hidden between all the other servers doing something else, you're going to have a, large, a hard time figuring out which one you will have to drive between all of these towers to figure out which one is pointing in the wrong direction. This is where configuration management, like Puppet, Salt, or Chef, comes along and helps you. You have your infrastructure defined as code. Your code can be committed to source to SVN, and well, Bob's will be applied, and everything is hopefully good. Then you have the orchestration part, which is basically uh, for our servers, is flush your caches or reload your uh, Apache processes or something like that. This is uh, routine management tasks. Uh, then for the code, so if we have everything in source code, like our infrastructure and our application, we can put it in a pipeline which goes from the pull from Git to the deploy on production. Now do we do that? We do, uh, we build our code, we deploy it on testing automatically, we get notified, it's newly built, we can test it ourselves, we can just, if it's okay, we can manually trigger a deploy to user acceptance testing and we can phone the customer and say hey, your new version is uh, live to test they go testing, they give their ok and we can deploy it to production so most parts is done automatically and this is a good thing because if you put everything in like a Jenkins pipeline you can enforce agreements between the developers you can put a lint checker in there and say this code has to fulfill these types of, uh, of, of assertions and if that's not working, the pipeline just says, I'm not, I'm not going to continue with this, this is, this is useless. Uh, Alright, but deployment is not the end of the story. And this is covered by Bruno extensively, and I just wish to touch it because it's the end in my, in my apprentice. Uh, it is about not only communication, but it's about knowing how your system is behaving. Who of you guys knows how your application is behaving? Okay, that's, that's not everyone. <laughs> it's not even 10. Okay, but this is, this is where everyone stops. The application is in deploy, the customer is happy because when they press the F5, when they press the F5 button, it works. But you don't know how your application is behaving now. What is your application going to do uh, in 10 days, 10 minutes? <coughs> because you can see trending. So what do you do then? Is you create a dashboard. This is again very extensively uh, explained by Bruno. It's your graph file. It's your log stack, your Fibana. It is your sentry. These are all the things you need to get a fix on how your application is behaving what is going uh, right, what is going wrong, what are the response times and on this data you can make good decisions you have a knowledge of what is happening on your system and you know what to do with it so uh, you can actually make effective business decisions on, based on actual data um, right. and the last part of the uh, acronym is SHARING this is basically what we're doing right here. We're sitting here, we're listening to presentations, we're having a beer, uh, and talking about what crappy days we have had, we have had at work, what server downtimes we had, and how to cope with it. This is the sharing part. It is going to conferences, it is 
pushing things open source, having feedback from other people how they do it, and getting pull requests inside for your code. So that is just awesome. So to conclude, what is DevOps? DevOps is all the things I just said. It's just applying common sense, actually. So it is a growing movement as a concept. Um, we certainly don't have all the answers yet, but we try to claim that we try to find the right questions for what is going on. And let's together find these answers. So now you know what the product is for, and then your Git repository for your Django application.